How is GPT-4 able to play complex open world games like Minecraft? How can an LLM play a brand new game that it has never seen during training? How well do they perform compared to a human player? How do they compare to state-of-the-art reinforcement learning techniques? We are going to answer all of these questions in this episode of Neural Breakdown, a series where I break down the technical and intuitive details of ongoing trends and algorithms in the machine learning and AI space. And today we are talking about several major advancements of game playing AI, particularly in the light of large language models like ChatGPT and GPT-4 being accessible to the public with API calls. Some of these works are purely LLM based and some are hybrid approaches that assist trainable RL agents to play complex games like Minecraft, Crafter and Atari. Make sure you stick till the end of the video where I will try to address the advantages and trade-offs for these approaches, the hurdles ahead and try to guess what the next couple of years of game playing AI research is gonna look like. Before I begin, the channel has gained 1000 subscribers in the last 4 videos and I can't thank you guys enough for supporting the channel and all the lovely comments you guys have shared. If you like this video, do hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't. It really helps the channel to grow and these videos to reach more audiences and thank you. So let's start off simple and talk about this new paper called Spring which uses GPT-4 to play a Minecraft like open world survival game called Crafter. The Crafter game was introduced in this paper in 2022 which is after the training cutoff of GPT-4 meaning it has no idea about the existence of this paper. Crafter is an open world survival game like Minecraft but it's 2D, much simpler and way faster making it ideal for experimentation and result collection. Crafter generates its world procedurally featuring grasslands, lakes, mountains, caves etc. Zombies come out to hunt during the night and skeletons shoot arrows at the player. To survive the player has to collect resources like wood, stone, iron and store them in their inventory. These resources can be used to grow plants, to eat and craft weapons to survive. The player also has to periodically replenish himself with food, water and rest to maintain his health. The goal of the game is to not die and unlock as many achievements as one can. Some achievements are really simple like wake up or collect cow and some challenges require a sequence of events to happen such as making a stone sword requires you to first collect wood, place a table, make a wood pickaxe and collect X amounts of stone. So to create an AI that can play crafter, Spring first extracts all the useful knowledge from the original crafter paper. The paper is broken up into paragraphs and important paragraphs with relevant game knowledge is identified with a prompt like, would this paragraph help me succeed in this game? For each relevant paragraph, information is extracted from it with prompts like, write all information helpful for the game in a numbered list or list all objects I need to interact or avoid to survive in this game. Finally, a deduplication step is run to remove all the redundant information across the different paragraphs and consolidate a guideline like place a plan to eat for health and dependency information like make a stone pickaxe to collect iron and combat strategies like collect iron to make iron pickaxe and sword to defeat zombies and skeletons. This context string is constructed only once as a pre-processing step and reused when the LLM plays the game. Note that although this paper explores a single game, this approach of extracting a context string could apply for other games too, whether from a paper, an instruction manual, a wiki, a reddit page, or even directly outlined by a human. And to play the game, the LLM is prompted with the extracted knowledge string and a visual description of the game's current state, like you see object X K steps away to the direction D and the agent's status like his health, food, water, rest, as well as his inventory. Given this input, we want the LLM to output an action for the given state. Instead of asking the LLM to directly output the final action, it is always better to ask it to do step-by-step -step reasoning first. This approach is also called chain of thought prompting and it is very useful to solve complex tasks that require a sequence of chain of associations. Feel free to pause and read through these examples to better understand this concept. To create chain of thought, the authors create a small directed graph of generic questions that nudge the LLM towards contextualizing the available knowledge before picking a final answer. Some questions like, for each object in the current observation, briefly answer what resources it provides, contextualizes the LLM about the environment and benefits of different options it has. 
Whereas questions like list top three subtasks and prioritize them out of five and which should the player do first ask the LLM to act as a high level planner. Because it's a directed acyclic graph, certain questions require previous notes to be answered first. For example, the planning step in question five requires the responses of descriptive questions like one and three so that the associative reasoning abilities of the LLM is triggered during the planning stage. The final nodes prompt the LLM to prioritize the planned tasks, validate the requirement and then choose one of the 17 available actions. Note that the LLM validations could be incorrect or a desired action might fail in the game which is fine because in the next observation we would ask it questions like what was the last action taken by the player and did it succeed? That makes the LLM self-reflect its previous suggestions and improve on its answers. The current state of the art of the crafter environment was held by a reinforcement learning algorithm called Dreamer V3 which I'll elaborate in a moment. Spring outperforms it by 88% improving the mean game score from 14.5 to 27.3. As shown in this figure, Spring is able to achieve many tasks faster or comparative time as Dreamer V3 and especially for achievements like make stone pickaxe, make stone sword, place furnace and collect iron which are 4 to 5 levels deep in the tech tree, Spring outperforms Dreamer by a large margin. Another recent work is Voyager that uses GPT-4's planning and code writing abilities to play Minecraft. Voyager is billed as the first LLM powered embodied lifelong learning agent to drive exploration, mastering a wide range of skills and make new discoveries continuously without human intervention. Voyager prompts GPT-4 with the overarching goal of discovering as many diverse things as possible including information about the agent's current state, inventory and nearby blocks and entities. Even though GPT-4 already saw volumes of internet data on Minecraft during training, they explicitly include snippets from wiki articles relevant to the current exploration progress of the player in the prompt. And this reduces hallucination and helps GPT to contextualize itself to game states it might not have originally been trained on or might have forgotten about. Next, GPT-4 is prompted to write code that would perform the planned task output by step 1. If the generated code fails to execute, the errors are fed back into GPT-4 for self-correction. A summary description of the outputted code is generated, embedded into a vector using OpenAI's embeddings API and then inserted into a vector database they call the skill library. The skill library is a huge corpus of small programs that the Voyager agent collects during its journey across Minecraft that can be invoked at any time to achieve a desired goal. Additionally, a list of already discovered skills is included in the prompt so GPT-4 can call these existing functions within its new code. Voyager is pretty awesome. It shows some exciting results about achieving complex multi-step tasks that require a bunch of intermediate steps to complete like crafting the golden swords and collecting lava buckets. And note how much faster these goals are achieved with the inclusion of the skill library compared to without it. So traditionally training AI for games like these are done using a branch of machine learning called reinforcement learning. And not too long ago, in this channel I made detailed devlogs about how to use RL in Unity to train a two-player AI system to shoot and dodge bullets. At a really high level, in RL we have an agent that observes the current state of the environment, queries a neural network called the policy network to determine the best action to take, performs that action, and the environment updates to the next state and gives back a numeric reward telling how good or bad the agent's last action was. The goal of RL is to collect these experiences by trial and error and improve its policy neural network to maximize the expected rewards it sees. RL doesn't require any explicit knowledge about the rules of the game and can train an AI through pure exploration of the environment. The problem with complex environments like Crafter, however, is that random exploration is not going to discover achievements that are hidden behind long sequences of actions. This leads to a problem known as sample inefficiency, where exploring randomly without any prior knowledge about the game will require a lot of samples of experiences, and the model will never be able to learn without experiencing success. The Dreamer V3 paper that held the previous best state of the art in the crafter environment employ what is called model-based reinforcement learning, where alongside the RL agent, they train an additional neural network called the world model that predicts potential outcomes from an input state action pair. While training the RL agent, the policy network can be trained using this proxy world model that can be queried much faster than running in-game simulation, thereby reducing the number of in-game sample requirements. 
This technique is known as imagination or dream training, hence the name dreamer. No human data or human intervention is needed and a fully automated generalized learning system is created. Fascinating, right? But what if we wanted to explicitly bake in information about the environment and guide the model during exploration? That's where LLMs come in to help improve sample efficiency. In the Exploring with LLM or ELLM project, the LLM receives a text description of the current state and a prompt like this asking for suitable next actions. The RL policy neural network inputs this goal and the current game observation state and learns to output an action. The resulting transition to the next state due to the agent's action is then captioned to a text description and the semantic similarity between that and the given goal is used as a reward signal. In other words, the LLM describes a high-level goal for the agent, the agent performs the action and the LLM then rewards the agent depending on how good the resulting transition was towards its goal. Another hybrid work is the Describe, Explain, Plan and Select or DEPS method that also uses the LLM to generate high-level plans for an agent playing Minecraft. However, unlike ELLM, they also ask the LLM to self-reflect and improve its generated plans depending on how well the agent did. The LLM first generates a multi-step plan from a high-level input task and then a trainable selector neural network ranks these steps and selects a single goal for the RL agent. A low-level policy network then inputs this goal and the current observation to take an action in the environment. If it succeeds, the selector picks a next goal, but if it fails, a descriptor module summarizes the execution error and prompts the LLM to self-reflect on the failure and course correct to generate a new plan. Here is an example of the conversation with an LLM to generate and explain plans. These are pretty interesting to read. I'll leave a link of the paper in the description below for your further reading. So far, we have seen a lot of where LLMs act as a high-level planner for an RL algorithm. But what about games that don't require much multi-step planning and more emphasis on moment-to-moment -moment gameplay? The Read and Read paper uses LLMs to generate auxiliary reward signals for an RL agent to learn Atari games like Pac-Man acting as additional feedback for the RL agents to guide favorable actions. As a pre-processing step, they input the instruction manual of the game and extract answers to questions like what is the objective of the game and what happens when the player hits ghost. And during gameplay, they identify objects like pellets, ghosts, fruit spills that appear in the player's bounding box. The LLM is then asked questions like should you hit that nearby object if you want to win? If the model answers yes, the agent receives a positive reward and a negative reward if the answer is no. This kind of a dense auxiliary reward signal basically micromanages the RL agent and encourages efficient exploration and better credit assignment for long-term rewards. So what's next? A big area of improvement could be unlocking multimodal modeling. Imagine if a Minecraft AI is trained not just on wikis and reddit posts but on the volumes of video data available on YouTube. Models like GBD4 and Flamingo can already do visual question answering and embodied projects like Google's Palm E have used multimodal modeling to make robots do planning of complex visual tasks. If you are interested in the area of multimodal modeling, I made a pretty detailed video about how it works so feel free to check it out after this one. While comparing LLMs and RL-based approach, it is important to consider that there is a significant compute and environmental cost to run LLMs like GPT-4 and ChatGPT. For example, the largest Dreamer model is about a billion parameters, whereas GPT-3 was 175 billion parameters and GPT-4 is close to a trillion parameters. RL models, unlike LLMs, explicitly allows us to update the weights of the underlying neural network and have previously demonstrated superhuman level performance in complex games like chess and go without needing any human demonstrations. It is also unclear how LLMs would perform in continuous observation or action spaces where obtaining an accurate text description is non-trivial. For example, to train controllers for physics-based characters to run and perform complex tasks by applying torques to each joint, an area of animation where RL has been king in the past few years. In summary, 
reinforcement learning trains general algorithms that does not require prior knowledge about the environment whereas LLMs need to be contextualized appropriately with impromptu game knowledge to play the game. RL explicitly trains the neural network to expertise on a single task whereas LLMs don't allow network updates and only receives feedback through prompting techniques like self-reflection. RL also offers more flexible state representations while LLMs require the input to be described in a text format although multimodal LLMs should allow image inputs in the near future. Reinforcement learning training suffers from sample inefficiency due to the initial random exploration and struggles when rewards are sparse and LLMs utilize their game knowledge to take reasonable actions from the beginning. Purely LLM models don't require any training and are very easy to use and convenient to experiment with but they also have a high compute cost compared to RL models. What excites me the most are the hybrid models that use LLMs to assist creating expert RL models by providing high level goals or auxiliary reward signals to train the agents faster, more efficiently and with less samples. Thanks for watching till the end. I appreciate if you hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel to stay in touch. This was Neural Breakdown and you have been magnificent.